Hi, welcome back to our channel. Yeah, my therapeutic interventions, Dillis and Pippi are joining me again today. Um, and today I'd like to talk about a particular therapy that somebody asked me for yesterday. I was speaking at the National Education Show for Wales and um, I had a message, well, I had several messages actually, but one of the messages was from Kelly who asked me um, how she could do play therapy with some um, students um, in a, the, the best cost-effective method. Now, there are obviously several ways to do play therapy. And one of the ways is um, to use, the, is to be trained by PT UK as a play therapist. And some of our teaching staff were trained by PT UK. PTUK, it is a degree um, type of course that you're going on. So you do need really to have attended university and um, to be of, of that stage where you can um, do the PTU course, PTUK course, sorry. Um, and two of our teachers actually did that for us um, because it was something that they wanted to further their CPD. Now, that is one way and it was certainly very useful. But we could only release them out of the classroom for a day, day and a half a week. So we wanted something that was obviously um, more than that. And we introduced this before we introduced PTUK, actually. We introduced it as soon as we opened the school. And that's something called Venture Into Play. Now, Venture Into Play is a programme available for use from the VIP Play Skills Profile. It's at interactive-connections.co.uk. If you visit that website, you can also order the skills profile for just £13.50 and find out about training opportunities. If you go to YouTube and search for PENCOCH, P-E-N-C-O-C-H, Venture Into Play, you can see a video of it in action. The VIP skills profile helps you to identify the student's current play skills with reference to two specific dimensions, the social dimension and the developmental dimension. The profile enables you to record the student's interactions with adults and other students in a playful situation. It allows you to record the developmental stages of the student's play. It allows you to record the progress over time of the student's play skills through dated descriptive comments. It allows you to review the student's profile of play skills. And it allows you to consider the emerging skills, strengths and weaknesses and identify targets. For instance, we need to be mindful that students with poor motor planning may find it easier to tip up a basket of toys than have to search through a full basket. Now, they're not being difficult. They actually would find it very difficult because of their motor planning to search through a basket for a specific toy. So it's far easy for them to tip up the basket. So these kind of things are certainly worth bearing in mind and worth recording on your play skills profile for that child. The VIP skills profile doesn't aim to describe every step in the development of play for individual students. Instead, it provides useful markers and signposts. The profile tackles the social dimension of play that Vygotsky might recommend. The cognitive development of play that Piaget wrote about. And part and stage of social play theory. Now let's look at neuroplasticity. Using play as a therapy can prove very beneficial to students with autism and ADHD. A play therapist will encourage the development of new neural pathways so that the student can cope better in a flight, fright, freeze or appease situation. And this process is known as neuroplasticity. It takes time and a lot of repetition. And that's why I recommend that um, Venture Into Play is timetabled 
And what, what, what I did was have a, a teaching assistant who's trained in it, who would be timetable for the whole week. So she, that would ensure that all of our students had the opportunity to have play therapy. And so um, they would be timetabled and follow, they, they would each have a record kept of, of um, their progress um, through venture into play. And um, they might go down to venture into play in groups of three. So they learn how to turn, take and share and all the rest of it and to play with other children rather than just alongside them. Or they may, as in, in certainly in one instance, one of our girls used to go down their first thing on her own every morning with the play um, therapist in venture into play to um, play with um, It's a Small World. Um, and as long as she had that every day, she could then go back to the class and she'd have a great day. Before she had the opportunity to do that, she used to find it so difficult to be in school. But the small world and play and, and doing venture into play set her up for the day. It was lovely. Um, so, oh, where was I going with that? Let me think. Well, during, uh, let's just go back to the neuroplasticity. During the COVID pandemic, Many people began to find out how it feels to have a body full of stress hormones. A person with autism lives with that all of the time. If you watch the 2012 program, ITV program, I'm a celebrity, you will have seen, sorry, this is, this is delisting, having a little chat. Um, you, you will have seen the Radio 1 presenter, Jordan North, taking himself in his mind to his happy place to take his mind off the fact that he had snakes climbing all over him whilst buried in a box. Um, so a play therapist will encourage um, students to find their own happy place. So that's quite good in itself, isn't it? You know, to relieve the stress is just brilliant and, and play therapy certainly helps that. So safeguarding. It's important to give students respect when they're having their individual therapies. No one should interrupt a therapy or bring a visitor into the session without prior agreement with the therapist, the child, or if that's not possible because of communication problems, then obviously the parent of the child, because everybody deserves respect. And we have to remember that play therapy is a form of learning and part of the curriculum in a special school. So we have to give it the respect, the same kind of respect that you would give to say a maths lesson. You know, we have to respect the fact that these children are learning to play. Before we can learn to learn, if you look at developmental progress in a child, before they can learn to learn, they have to learn to play. So if you think of the developmental progress of most of the students, if not all of the students that you would have in a special school, then they would be at that stage of learning to play. And this is why play is such a vital part of, of special schools. And I, I, I have um, written a book about that, um, which is called Learning Through Play for Children with PMLD and Complex Needs. And it's um, due out in January for my publishers right this, but you can pre-order now if you like. Uh, and that will give you loads of ideas about introducing play um, into, a, into a special school, or actually you could introduce some aspects of it into a mainstream school. And um, oh, lost the thread of that now, um, because there's somebody um, out in the garden <laughs> um, mm. and um, just spotted mm. them. So <laughs> sorry, lost the thread of, of, uh, of that particular thing. Anyway, so we've said about safeguarding. We also need to say about risk assessments, which should always be done beforehand, and the child protection um, followed, and the child protection policy followed. And so we've said about um, the book, which is due out in, in um, January and ready to, to pre-order. And um, I'm just hoping that I haven't missed out anything. As I said, um, Venture into play is something that can be timetabled. And it's, it's very important in a special school, as we've said about learning to play comes before learning to learn. And special schools aren't um, learning about how to get through tests.
special schools about learning how to get through life itself. And so a lot of the things that we do in a special school are very therapeutic, but they're also learning. And you will find that they are developing really important skills that they don't even realize they're learning because they think they're playing. So it's, it's, um, it's very clever. Uh, I hope I haven't left anything out, but I would highly recommend venturing to play um, as a, a therapeutic play that you could do with students if you can't afford or some or, or one of your teachers doesn't want to do the PTUK course and, and bear in mind that does take a little while although they are they can um, deliver um, the therapy as part of their training whilst they're on the course. Venture into play is far quicker and can be put into place almost immediately and it's very cost effective and I have found that it's worked tremendously and I know for a fact that it's still being used in that school today. Okay, so I hope that helped. If you've got any questions, then obviously you can contact me by email or you can put it underneath. If you like this video, then I would appreciate a thumbs up down below uh, and a follow might be nice. Um, but all in all, both me and Dilly, who's been very chatty at this moment, and, um, Pippi is fast asleep behind me. <laughs> but we love talking to you and love helping you in any way that we can. I think I said at the beginning of this that this um, video is for Kelly, who um, asked me um, about play therapy and, and different ways of supporting children with play. So I hope she's watched it and enjoyed it and gives me a thumbs up. Take care, all of you. And it's goodbye. From us. <laughs>